friends, and welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. Continuing our special episode from Monday titled Food for Breast Cancer Survival, we are featuring Food for Life recipes from the Cancer Project, which is affiliated with the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, or PCRM. The Cancer Project promotes cancer prevention and survival through a better understanding of cancer causes, particularly the link between nutrition and cancer. Registered dietitian Stephanie Bina and Chef Sualua Tupelo will present low fat, entirely vegan, and absolutely tasty dishes to enrich our health and lives with better food choices. Our main course today is homestyle squash and pinto beans. We're going to be serving that over some toasted couscous. This recipe is loaded with fiber and fiber helps our bodies get rid of excess estrogen. The liver sends unneeded estrogen into our intestinal tract and when fiber is present it soaks it up and carries it out of the body. But if fiber is not present then the excess estrogen gets reabsorbed into the bloodstream. You mentioned loaded with fiber Let's take a look at these ingredients. We have our squash, we have our tomatoes, some jalapenos, garlic, some thyme, corn, pinto beans, onions, and vegetable broth. Shall we put it together? Show me how. Okay, what we're gonna do is start off by sauteing our onions and garlic. Let's check our fire. Okay, so we're going to add our onions into this. We're going to put our garlic. And we're going to add just a little vegetable broth. And we'll just get those nicely moved around. Okay, our next, we're going to add our squash to it. Now you're using zucchini and yellow squash, right? The summer squash. A good, a good color, you know, mix up the colors. You can use either one by itself, but I like to put some color in there. I like mm -hmm. this dish is nice and colorful. Mm -hmm. In the fall, when winter squash is available, this dish would be delicious it, with butternut squash uh, or acorn squash. Okay, so we'll just stir this up a little. Okay. And again, we're eliminating the extra fat by using vegetable broth in this dish. That keeps the added fat from vegetable oil to a minimum. So we're going to add our yellow squash. They sometimes call this crooknick squash as well because sometimes they have that little crooknick to it. Okay. So we add our zucchini. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's looking really good there. Okay, so we'll just let this cook for a little bit more. At this time, I like to add our thyme and some jalapenos. Okay, have some diced already. If you didn't have fresh jalapenos, is there any spices, dried spices you could add? Well, you can use the dried chili flakes. That's common in the household, mm -hmm. chili powder little cumin, mm -hmm. those are all good things to add to it. It's great if you can get the fresh peppers because yeah. they contain some vitamin C. Yeah, serrano peppers are good as well if you don't have the jalapenos. We're at our, our bright colored tomatoes here. Okay. Our corn. And I'm using frozen corn today. Just if, you, if it's available when it's fresh, you can use those nice corn cobs and just take it out. Our pinto beans. Let's just put a little bit more stock in here. All right. This is that nice, nice and colorful. So we'll just let this um, cook for a little while. Just put a, a little sea salt to this and a couple of grinds from our pepper. So we're going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes. Okay, so let's take a look at our, our squash and our pinto beans here. 
Oh yeah, isn't that nice? Look at that. Oh, just a little bit more pepper here. There you go. That's beautiful. I think our squash is right there where I would want it to be. Not really um, mushy, where you have that nice crunch to it still. It's still holding its shape. Still holding its shape. The colors are, are vibrant. They're so like calling you, come on, dig mm -hmm. in. I want you to taste me, right? You know? Okay, so. So what are we serving this with? We're gonna serve it over our couscous. Let's take a look at that. Cause I, I started this a little earlier. And what I did is just toasted our couscous and then heated up some vegetable broth and just uh, poured the hot vegetable broth right over our couscous oh, and just covered the lid. It mm -hmm. takes about five minutes to cook. You can follow the package though, um, the direction that's on the package. You can just basically do that. That's a good tip to use the vegetable broth just to add the flavor. That's right, because keep in mind, uh, water has no flavor. So if you can add flavor to something by using vegetable broth, that works, the flavor is there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't you hand me that plate right there and we'll, we'll add our, our squash to that. Okay. Look at that, isn't that nice? And now couscous is actually a type of pasta, right? Right, mm -hmm. this is a little pasta that they do like the steaming thing and then mm -hmm. dry it up again. And, so we'll just put some of that right here in the middle. So it's not a whole grain. It doesn't have as much fiber when compared to brown rice or another whole grain, but it's still a great low fat choice. That's right. I think the sweetness of this would pair really well with millet. Millet, yeah, that's mm -hmm. another one that people seem to forget. Look at that, isn't that nice? Okay, and that's basically it for this dish. Are you ready for dessert? Always. Okay, we have a berry applesauce coming right up. Evidence suggests that women with breast cancer whose diets are rich in fruits and vegetables tend to survive longer. Our berry applesauce is loaded with two cancer-fighting weapons, beta carotene and vitamin C. Well, our berry applesauce is very delicious as well. We're gonna start off with some nice apples that we've peeled, cored, and already cut up into pieces. Then we have a mixed berry here with strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Then we have some blueberries here, little cinnamon, and some apple juice concentrate. I already got a head start on this dish by adding our apples to here because they take the longest. So we've added some apples already into the pot. Now we're going to add our berry mixture. Did you put anything in the pot with the apples? Well, we just put a little, um, little of our apple juice concentrate in there. So I'll just add a little bit more to this. So I'm going to use a little of our blueberries now. Okay. We'll just get that in there. All right, we're gonna add a little cinnamon. And another nice thing to do, if you don't want to, to see the cinnamon, is just to add a whole cinnamon stick in there. And then you can pull the cinnamon stick out and still yet have that nice cinnamon flavor without actually seeing the cinnamon. So it's a good way to, to have people go, mm, this tastes good, but what do I taste? <laughs> because they don't see the cinnamon powder in there. Okay, so we'll just give this a nice stir. So now that we're have this simmered here. Let's mash them up. I like to do it right in the pot just to mash it up here. Another thing you can use is you can use the food processor, but you might want to let it cool down a little bit before you put it in the food processor to process it. Or you can just do it right into the pot. Now what I'm do here is just take my masher and just smash all this together. And you want to make sure that the apples are nice and tender. So right when they're tender, that's when it's ready to go. Would you like to taste? I'd love to. Okay. How is it? Mm, it's really good. Remember, it's easy to eat right for breast cancer prevention and survival. For more information on the Cancer Project and Food for Life, please visit 
cancerproject.org, foodforlifetv.org, or call 001-202-244-5038 to learn more about how a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans can help you prevent cancer. visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.